Hello, everyone. My name is Anand Francis. Uh, so uh, I'm here to give a talk on um, code to deployment. Um, so I have with me co-speaker Savita. So with the, with the exciting uh, growth of dev tools, uh, now we have like enabling developer productivity uh, by enabling uh, developers to fastly and securely deploy code to the production level. So today we'll see an approach where we are going to use a stack that is based on Tekton pipelines as code and Argo CD as the deployment tool and see how this stack could be leveraged for enabling uh, ease of uh, deployment from code to production. So I'll start with an introduction about myself. Uh, I'm Anand Francis and I'm a principal software engineer at Red Hat. So I work in the Argo CD uh, community project so there we are uh, working on uh, improving the performance and the scalability aspects of Argo CD. And I'll uh, hand over the mic to Savita. Yep. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the session. Thanks for joining us. Uh, so myself, Savita. So I also work for Red Hat. Uh, I do contribute to the project called Tekton. It's an upstream project. So there are multiple part of there in this Tekton org. So we, we try to contribute everywhere it is possible. So you guys can reach out to us on Slack upstream. We, we are even on Kubernetes Slack, Tekton, Knative, and Twitter's LinkedIn. All right. Uh, so this is the pretty much agenda we have it for today. So basically, I will be covering like uh, what is cloud native CI CD, a brief intro, and then intro to the Tekton. So Tekton has, as I mentioned, Tekton is a, uh, a big org. It has multiple sub-projects. So in this particular session, we are, I, I, we are going to talk about the pipelines as code. It's overview how pipelines as code allow us to do, uh, I mean, allow us to achieve the best practices of security things to achieve our CI CD stuff. And then, uh, some of the comparative study which we have done in our day-to-day -day use cases, I will be sharing that. So, and then I'll pretty much talk about the Tekton chains. So, Tekton chains with this, how can we able to achieve, like, we, how can we able to attest our workload, I mean, the CI CD workloads. And then, uh, like, uh, then Anand will talk about the Argo CD part. How after the dip, I mean, how after the CI part, how CD will uh, come into uh, play, and how we can achieve that using Argo CD, and then like uh, image updater part, where like how dynamically changes can be deployed on the cluster, and then finally we little bit talk about the policy stuff, like how we can ensure security can be achieved when we talk about the end-to-end -end flow using a six-store policy controller today. And then finally, we have a demo. So we have recorded our demo because we have multiple components involved here. So that's the reason. And finally, we can take questions if time permits. All right, uh, let's move on. So we all of us know about CI CD, right? So I will not go in deep about that, but I am interested mostly on cloud native CI CD. So when when we call it when we call our CI CD as a cloud native, it's basically if it obeys the principles like running your workloads using containers or the orchestrators. If if that uh, CI if, if that tool follows like auto scaling part, if it doesn't require any particular team to handle something, or like it obeys the DevOps principles. So if 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 the tool or the, if the platform or if the product if obeys all these things then we can simply say it as a cloud native ci cd so uh, i mean it, uh, it just a uh, comparison like uh, in traditional ci cd right it's mostly designed for virtual machines but cloud native is for orchestration stuff and for uh, traditional we require a, a team of ops to maintain uh, to handle the auto scaling and all those things but cloud native as it's on on orchestrators, so all these things we can get inbuilt. So a couple of things I have listed over there. Now, 
when we say tech, why we took this tecton? Because this obeys all the principles of uh, CI, cloud native CI CD and it is popularly used. Why? Because it's very native to Kubernetes. That's the one of the major reasons why people are moving towards CI CD for tecton. So again, it's an open source project completely. Uh, its uh, major focus is for building CI CD for Kubernetes platforms. Uh, it is Till now, under CD Foundation. Okay, uh, so as I mentioned, like cloud native, uh, cloud native CI CD, Tecton also follows, like built for Kubernetes, scaling is on demand, and even Tecton uh, follows, like securing your end to end pipeline with multiple uh, plugins with that. And it is very flexible, you can plug in, plug out anywhere you want because it has multiple reusable entities in that. Okay, so uh, every project have its own core concept, right? So like in Kubernetes, we have like pod, deployment, and service. If you know uh, these three concepts, we can able to write our own application and deploy it on the Kubernetes. Similarly, in Tecton, we, we have the same core uh, concepts and uh, that, are, that I have listed here. So basically, we call it as a step, task, pipeline, task run, pipeline run. So instead of uh, explain, I mean instead of talking this way, so I will be talking in a diagrammatical way just to picture out like how things are clubbed together. Uh, yep. Uh, step in Kubernetes we have a, a pod as a basic unit or basic entity, right? So in Tecton uh, we have a step uh, is a basic entity, right? Steps are nothing but the uh, part of task or part of the things get it's done. It, it runs as a container. So if you want to compare with Kubernetes, step is similar to container, we can say. So I, I, I'll let you know like why I have divided the steps into multiple pieces in a different, different state. So in, uh, in, in uh, Kubernetes, we, it is not the best practices to run pod in its own, right? We always run with the deployment. So similarly in Tecton, the steps cannot be run individually. It has to be clubbed in an entity called task. So the task is nothing but the template which can have one or more than steps. So, uh, so the, the, uh, there can be multiple tasks which can do some particular stuff. So now I, I'll tell like why I have divided the task into three. I mean like one for cloning the part, one for building and one for deploy. It's because Tecton has this uh, visibility of reusability. Bas what I want to say is like, let's suppose if we have a scenario where I want to do uh, build for Golang, build for Java, so the building step will change, building uh, scenario will change, but the cloning part and deploying part will be same. So in Tecton, if we divide that scenario as a task, like cloning can be written as a one task, building one task and deploying. So this way what will happen, we can reuse this task where, whenever we want. And this entire uh, things can be clubbed together in an entity called pipeline. So again, it's a template uh, which, which can have more than one task. And this pipe, writing it in, a, in this pipeline template help us to manage which task to run when and which task to run after uh, execution of the previous task and all those things. And in order to run this template, we have a uh, resource called pipeline run. So basically the pipeline task, they are just a static template. They don't run anything. In order to instantiate those templates, we have a resource called pipeline run. Okay, moving on. So as I mentioned, I will be talking about the pipelines as code today. So it's because when we say Tecton, right, it has multiple things. But we, uh, th there is a project called Pipelines as Code. What it does is like it's, it's basically an opinionated CI. I mean, its focus is to automate everything so that user, when he sends a pull request or push request, right, CI should run automatically and finally he, he, he should get some status on the uh, source code management. That is the goal of the Pipelines as Code today. So it, it is uh, feasible for different, different pro, uh, source code managements. It can be integrated with GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, 
And even if, if there is no source code management, if you want to handle, we have an incoming webhook way as well. So the, some of the benefits is like it, it follows the version control mechanism. It, 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 it helps us in the repeatability. I mean, like the same template we can use for multiple uh, GitHub repo. So collaboration within the team can be handled very well with pipelines as code. Yes, the major part of it is automations. I mean, like one, one flow should be completed with just few clicks. And then we have scalability. This is like an inbuilt feature because we are on container orchestrators. And change tracking because we are using source code management here. All right. Uh, now moving on. So pipelines as code, like how the template should be kept. So basically, pipelines as code always looks for a folder called .tecton inside your GitHub repository. So uh, this is the comparative things we have done, like with the GitHub actions. So. We, we, there are multiple uh, solutions in the market, right? I mean, like, we have many things we can achieve. But why I, am to, why I took GitHub Actions? Because before using, I mean, before starting with pipelines as code, right? In Tecton, we used to have this GitHub Action integrated with GitHub project, and we used to write a workflow. Let's suppose creating the kind cluster, running E2E test, and all those stuff. But again, that is only for GitHub it used to happen. But again, if I want to do for GitLab, I need to go for another solution and all. So that's where pipelines as code help us to uh, come out of that scenario where I can use one single platform for all the cloud providers. All right, so just to give a brief, like we have a Git platform, user will send a pull request, then the platform which does the action and finally report the status back to your GitHub repo. All right, so some of the best practices which CI can be hand, uh, with, with pipelines we can handle is like, we can, we can very well co co cover the policy part. We can handle the token generation for private GitHub repository, public repository. Even we have a controlling of the uh, request, like who can send the pull request, who can view, who cannot do, all those things of uh, granular level can be controlled here. All right, so Tecton chains are used because we are talking one of the policy controller today here. And Tecton chain is the uh, module in Tecton org which actually does that part. I mean, signing of attestation of the payload, attest, signing of the image, everything can be handled using Tecton chains. So it uses this uh, SLSA level two, which is like a, a next level from basic to this thing. And it always watches for the task run completion. Once it is completed, if there is any images built by the task run, it try to sign that image. And that signing, signed image we can use later for deploying purpose. All right, so I will hand over to Anand. He'll talk about Argo CD. So um, till now, uh, Savita covered the CI part. So from code to image, uh, that is being covered by the CI tool. Uh, now we can look uh, how we can take it to production. So the tool that we are going to explore here is Argo CD here. Uh, it's quite a popular tool that's used widely. Uh, it follows the GitOps principles. So what do we mean by GitOps here? So there are like four concepts, principles that GitOps has defined. So we'll basically start with a desired state being stored in a Git repository. So this, this could be any, any Git implementation but the desired state has to be stored in a, a version storage. Uh, then we have the cluster state and an agent which observes that state. The agent not only observes the state, but it compares with what is defined uh, in the Git repository as the desired state and constantly reconciles it. So the three principles revolves around this GitOps engine that's being um, implemented. So one is the declarative nature. So GitOps principle can be applied only for systems that support declarative nature. Kubernetes being a declarative system is suited well for this uh, GitOps principles. And uh, next one is regarding the storage, which is versioned and immutable. That's why we choose the Git repository. 
And then uh, the last thing is about the agent. So it's pulled automatically, meaning that there is no manual intervention. So as soon as you deploy the agent, the agent starts looking for changes in the Git repository and starts uh, deploying the manifest. And the last is the continuous reconciliation. So any manual changes that is done on the cluster state should be reverted, and whatever is defined as the source of truth in the Git would be applied on a, on a continuous basis. So there are like two popular implementations. One is the Argo CD, and the other is the Flux CD, which follows this um, uh, GitOps uh, principles. So oh, this is a typical uh, architecture for Argo CD. So the core components uh, is, is, is described in the Kubernetes uh, block. So we have the repository service that does the interaction with the Git repository. So a uh, user creates an Argo application wherein he tells where is the Git repository located at and what is the version that needs to be deployed at. So the repository takes care of taking the latest manifest from the Git repository. And next we have the application controller, which is the agent that does the continuous reconciliation part. The rest of it is all the supporting components. The core components are the repository service and the application controller. We have the API server, which interacts uh, with, which, which is used for interacting with the UL, UI and the CLI. Uh, Argo CD supports deployment to multiple clusters. So there is a concept called destinations, wherein you can have multiple destination and you can select like which cluster you want to deploy a particular manifest. So the next uh, tool that we are going to talk about is the Argo CD image updater. Uh, this is used for decoupling uh, CI and CD. So generally there will be like two repositories, one for the source code and the other for the storing the uh, Kubernetes manifest. So in order to decouple this, we are using the image updater. So it's a controller which checks the container registry if there are any latest images that are, that are available and that could be deployed onto the cluster. And you can define rules on what you think is the latest and what should be de being deployed. So that way, you don't have to maintain the uh, Git uh, repository which contains the Kubernetes manifest for every incremental image update that you're doing. So that is the advantage of going with this Argo City image updater. And then in Argo, in Argo application, there is a concept called sync policy, wherein you can define whether the uh, sync should be done automatically or manual. So if you are doing automatic sync, then there is no manual intervention. So as soon as there is an image available in the container registry that is latest, that will be automatically applied. If you are going for a manual, manual sync operation where you want to have some kind of control, on what's being deployed on the cluster, you can go for the manual approach, wherein, it, uh, wherein the Argo CD image updater will tell there is an image available here, whether you want to pick it up or not. So you have some control with, by, with the automatic sync policy that is available in the Argo application. So these are some of the update strategies. So how do we say that an image is latest and that is what we want to be deployed? So SEMVR is like the semantic versioning if you have like x dot y dot z, and you can define like the latest is x dot y. So if there is an image pushed with a tag, with say like a 1.2, and there is an image update available saying that it's, there is a new version 1.3, that will be treated as a latest. And the latest one is based on the timestamp, so whichever image was pushed most recently will be treated as the latest image. Uh, digest is when you use, like if you are using the latest tag, there could be like multiple uh, images being pushed with the same tag, but with different SHA digest. So if you want to based, I mean, imp deploy the latest one based on the digest, you can go for that option. The last one is name. So that is used when you are um, uh, going for a tagging mechanism, which is based on dates, date timestamp. So you can choose the name, which will sort it uh, alphabetically and takes the latest one. So we have like two uh, update methods from the Argo CD image updater. One is you directly update the Argo CD, which is not a, a, a persistent solution. So it is temporary. If, if there is any crash in Argo CD, you will lose the changes done by the image updater. 
The next option is you are persisting that image update in the Git itself. So even if there is a crash of the Argo CD, when it comes back, it will know that there was a latest image update that was done, and it will pick that image. OK, so uh, the last thing is about the uh, uh, six store. Uh, so this is used for um, six store provides a set of uh, tools that could be used for signing and verifying the images. So uh, once we start pushing the images to the container registry, we want to have some control on what is being deployed on the production cluster. So the mechanism that we use is signing and verifying. So you sign the images on the CI part and verify the images during deployment so that you know that what, what, what you have built is what is being deployed and not anything else. So these are some of the components that we have. Uh, the first one is Cosign, which is a CLI tool, which is used for signing and verifying it. Uh, Savita will cover this as part of the demo, so where we use the Cosign tool for signing in the CI uh, process. Uh, policy control is what lives in the uh, actual production clusters. Uh, there, you will verify whether the image is signed. Uh, the rest of uh, the components are used for what is called as uh, keyless signing. So if you don't want to manage your keys, you can opt for this approach, wherein uh, the, the keys are managed by a central certificate authority using an uh, OIDC connect. So the last one, we'll not be covering it in the demo, and we'll be using a key-based uh, I mean, image signing that will be used for uh, verifying the images during deployment. Okay, I'll hand over to Savita for the demo. Yeah, yes. All right, so in the demo part, what we are going to cover is like a user will send a, I mean, the user will write a pipeline. That pipeline basically contain cloning the code, storing it in the storage. And we do some static check, like linter, wet, wet and all those things. So once that is done, we will go for a build. So in this build step, we will build the image and push it to the registry. So this part, we call it as a CI. So once uh, this is done, we will set, uh, I mean, the deployment side, that image will be used. So before go and deploy, we will do the image verification whether it is signed by trusted one or not. So if it is not, then it will straight away reject. We won't go and deploy it. If it is success, we will go and deploy in a, in a cluster using Argo CD. Now, who has done the signing here, right? So that's where Tekton chains play a role here. I mean, during the build process, during the CI step, Tekton chains controller will keep on monitoring when this build, build task gets completed. Once that is done, Tekton chains will look for that and do the attestation and signing part. Uh, I'll quickly show uh, in the demo side. All right, so so we have recorded because we are involving with multiple components and all. So yeah, uh, before that, let me. So yeah, uh, this is the project repo we just written. So for time constraint, we have already installed pipeline chains dashboard. Pipelines as code, and we have given the instruction here, like how to set up, and everything is created even for the Argo CD. So if I go and show, get pods, yeah, uh, Tekton pipelines. So uh, ev all the pods are up and running. So when, uh, but uh, thing is like. Tekton involve multiple projects, right? But to deploy each and everything manually, it is very hectic. So instead of that, we can go with operator, where with the help of operator, we can install every Tekton modules in a single release YAML, with a single release YAML. OK, so once that is done, right? So I'll go back to recorded demo. Yeah, so it is initially installed everything, right? So operator. So now what I'm doing, I will be uh, raising a pull request. So you can see here in this repo, I'm doing, I'm sending a pull request with some, uh, uh, with with some invalid uh, or some uh, some mistake by, by doing some mistake. So once after doing the pull request, right, the CI will get triggered. So I'll show here. Okay, initially when I did this, right, pull request. 
let me go little, yeah, uh, initially CI did not trigger, right? CI did not trigger because it, 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 because it, because in cluster, we don't have anything to tell like, okay, from where the request is coming and all those things. So I'll quickly go back to this repo where I will show like, this is the documentation, right? The repository CR. This is the custom resource we have in pipelines as code. So which actually tells, okay, when uh, this repo custom resource will be installed in the cluster and whenever a pull request will will be sent from that project, right? So somebody should be there to let controller know that, okay, event is coming from that project. So that's where this repository uh, helps in to do that. And we will specify what URL, I mean, from which URL the event is coming. So that was, uh, that was missing initially. So that's where I have created the repository CO, CR. So you can see here, uh, yeah, initially it was not there, so I am creating the cre uh, repository for this Cube Day India project, right? So once the repository is success, once it is get created, so what we can do, we can go back to repo, and I can, so one way is like I can close this pull request and reopen, or else I can send a like retest test. So it will just go ahead and uh, start the uh, uh, CI for us. So yeah, you can see here, the CI will start in a second, so you can see that CI is started. Now, I just wanted to cover one more thing here. So, as I mentioned, tecto pipeline says code always look for .tecton folder. So, in this .tecton folder, I have kept two repository, uh, two YAMLs, one for pull request based, one for push request. So, it means whenever pull request comes to your repository, right, only this pipeline run will get triggered. If push request, other one. So how that can be distinguished? That is through annotation. This is one way. And another way is like we have a cell expression supported in pipeline run. So I have specified clearly like, OK, run this PR, pipeline run, if it is for pull request. And always focus for the target branch called main. And if we want to do for both pull request and push, we can specify something like this. And one more thing I want to bring here about this task, right? I, I don't have anything in my cluster, the installation of this task. But when this, this pipeline run uh, started, right, how this task will get resolved? So tech, pipeline says code, if we specify task something like this, it will try to download from this Tecton Hub. So what is this Tecton Hub? So Tecton Hub is a uh, like kind of a registry for Docker images. Similarly, in Tecton, we have multiple reusable tasks that can be used by multiple folks, right? So we hosted a, a, a hub where all the tasks can be kept. So by default, if you don't specify any path and all, it will try to download from the hub. But we have a feasibility to specify from which location you want to download the task. Either it can be your private, or either it can be from your local cluster itself, or either it can be from your another GitHub repository. Right? And this is how uh, the task can be written. Uh, one task, the second task, and the task reference I have just specified as a ref. And just wanted to mention one more thing, like, how do I ensure that the static, I mean, uh, linting should happen only after the cloning the code? Because obviously, if I don't have any code, for, where do I should do the linting part? So this run after is the one entity which will help us to uh, uh, like design our pipeline. I mean, which task to be run after which task. So this is the one entity I want to mention. And we can specify input output resource using workspaces, like how the data can be shared, whether it is a through wall. Workspace is nothing but you can assume like a volumes in Kubernetes. All right, so now going back, the pull request, uh, it, it is uh, started. And we can easily view on the Tecton dashboard, the running of the pipe, uh, pipeline run. And we can e even see the steps, like how they are done. And initially, it will fail because I did some mistake while doing the PR, right? So even we can see the logs of that, like why it has failed. It is because I have not handled the error. So what I'm going to do now is like I'll just go and edit this. OK, so before that, I just want to mention that 
I, I, as I mentioned, pipelines as code help us to report the status back to the GitHub, right? So this is how it looks like. So why it is failed, what is the reason, and how many steps got exit, uh, sorry, tasks got ex executed successfully and how many not. And the reason for the failure also we can easily view here, like what was the reason. All right, so now I will just go back and uh, edit the file, right? I will edit the file to correct the mistake which I have done and I will re-push the changes. So once I do re-push uh, re the changes, again my pipeline run will get triggered. So this time CI will be success. So once CI is success, let's, let's merge this pull request, right? So after merging this pull request, the next pipeline, uh, next uh, uh, pipeline run should start, which is nothing but the push request uh, related pipeline run. So that one, how can I check? So if you see here, I can go back to uh, the repository. There should be some uh, indication for me to see whether pipeline CI is started or not, right? So you can see that this, this one, it shows that one in progress check. So that indicates that CI is started and it is running. Okay, so let me quickly show that uh, steps. Yeah, uh, sorry, yeah, okay. So this is how the, after the push request CI is started. So it has done the fetch repository success, successfully and uh, building of the image is success. Everything is success and finally in the right URL step, I have pushed this image to uh, this uh, repository. Now how do I verify that, like okay, it has pushed, it has signed, and it has attested. So I can go back to my query registry, and I can see, okay, a few seconds ago, the uh, image is pushed, and this indicates, okay, so this indicates that it is signed by cosine using tecton chains. All right, so, yeah, uh, okay. I'll uh, quickly, sh uh, I mean, quickly walk through, like uh, once uh, that signed image is done, we can do it on the Argo CD part. Uh, let me quickly show that. Right, so when we, when we deploy, right, initially it will fail for me because I have given the wrong public key. I have passed the wrong public key. But when I updated with the correct key in the cluster policy, which is like six store policy, so it, it works for me in the correct way and I should able to see. So I am doing the edit of the policy, cluster image policy, and I'm editing the public key with the right one. So once the, I have edited the public key, as, I, as Anand mentioned, that Argo CD always looks for the uh, changes from the GitHub repository or the cluster changes and try to sync with that. So that's where you can see like uh, within a few fraction of seconds, it tries to take the updated changes and it will make a sync okay. It means it, it could able to see the act, uh, right public key and it has started creating the uh, application. All right, so, yep, yeah. Uh, do you want to say something? Yeah. Yeah, uh, a quick uh, update like how you can add like multiple environments. So you can use the same Argo image updater but with different image tags. Like the first one will always, is an integration environment looking for the master builds. The next one is like a candidate build which you want to promote to staging. And the last one is the final released build image. So you can have like different tags and use Argo image updater to do the automatic deployment. Yeah, thanks everyone, and uh, there, this QR code is for the uh, developer.redhat.com where there are like a lot of resources to understand all the developer tools maintained by Red Hat. Uh, yeah, thanks for your patient listening, thanks. Thank you.